the must-eat foods in Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video is part of my series on Fukushima and Japan as a whole. If you wanna see more Fukushima videos or Japan videos, you'll find links in the description below. But in this video, I'm gonna be telling you what you must eat if you come to Fukushima. And the first thing we're gonna start with is the negi soba. What is a negi soba? It's what I'm holding right now. And it is soba, which are buckwheat noodles that have a negi in it. What the heck is a negi? This is a leek, and it's a specially grown leek to be used essentially as the eating vehicle. This is not served with chopsticks. You notice I have no chopsticks, and so these noodles are entirely eaten with this leek right here. And what's also special about this soba, it's not, uh, it's not hot, it's served cold. Uh, and as you eat it, um, you kind of you kind of eat the soba a little bit, huh? and you slurp it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you bite the leek or the negi, and the soba has a mild taste, but the negi has a spicy taste. <clears throat> so you get kind of mild and spicy all together. It's also got daikon radish and bonito flakes. Really, before you do this, you're supposed to stir it up. So when you come to Fukushima, make sure you get the negi soba, and the place you get this is in Oichi Juku. It's a specialty of this particular town. So now the question is, what does negi soba go best with? What should we drink with negi soba? Well, I understand this shop actually has a special sake that's only available here. And actually, I think the sake is just on its way. A cup of this sake costs 800 yen, and it's pretty special because they age it under the snow for a hundred days. Ooh, that cup's getting full. First you pour it over the cup. Is there something special or ceremonial about that? Mm. <laughs> Let's give this sake a try. By the way, in this video, you're not just gonna listen to me talk all the time, but actually we'll be talking to some of the locals that either own the restaurants, work in the restaurants, make the food. Here at Masawa, yeah, one of the managers agreed to answer a few of my questions. How old is this restaurant? How many bowls of negi soba do you serve in a day? What's the best time of year for people to come uh, visit? The soup tastes very different from other soba broths I've had. What's special about the soup broth? Well, thank you very much for the delicious negi soba. Hi, right. Appreciate it. So if you like gyoza, and who doesn't like gyoza, when you come to Fukushima, you should get their specialty gyoza. It's called enban gyoza, and it's gyoza that's in the shape of a disc right here. There's about 17 restaurants in Fukushima that serve this style of gyoza. We are here at Terui, which is the originator of the enban gyoza. And it's not just the fact that it's in a disc, which is kind of like a work of art and it's really neat. But actually, when you order it, they actually make and wrap it individually for every person to order. They have this frying pan that they fry it in, and it's a round frying pan. They place it in there for about five minutes. They flip it over, put it on a plate, and that's what gives it this distinct circular shape and actually kind of keeps all of it a little bit together. You know, the best thing to drink with gyoza is beer. And uh, gyoza, in many places, is served as like a side dish, but here gyoza is the main course. And I think gyoza is a food worthy of being a main course. The side dish for gyoza is then, of course, the soy sauce, right, to dip it in. So let's go ahead and try one of these tasty morsels. I'm excited, because I, I love gyoza. And I, and I love trying all the different regional specialties of gyoza in Japan and I've never had the Fukushima specialty. So it also looks crispier than uh, typical gyoza. Mmm, mmm. It's tasty, it's tasty. I love the extra crispiness uh, that comes with the way that they fry it. And it is worthy of a main dish. I don't need any side dishes to go with gyoza. Mm. And here, when you order the gyoza, it can come in two sizes. 
Uh, it comes in a size of 11. In that case, it's not big enough to be a full disc. The full disc that I've got right here is the size 22. 1250 yen, about 12 US dollars for a pretty good meal. Of course, the, the biru costs a little more, but Ooh, it's cold and refreshing. Excellent. So when you come to Fukushima Prefecture, make sure to get some Enban Gyoza. It's definitely a must eat. Another must eat in Fukushima Prefecture is Sauce Katsudon. And we are at Nakajima Restaurant, the originator of Sauce Katsudon 80 years ago, right here, this dish. They actually do have two dishes of Sauce Katsudon. This one on my left, that has egg and onion, and this one on the right that uh, has sauce and cabbage. I wanna go ahead and dive into this one with the, with the egg. It looks pretty good and moist. It's flavorful. Katsudon usually isn't um, sweet, but because this has the sauce on it, it has a sweet taste to it. And uh, let me get down to some of the rice in here. Hmm. And the onion and the sauce kind of has a taste of like, uh, like a French sauce. Um, so let's move on to this one. This is the one that has cabbage underneath. Mmm. The pork on this one has a different texture. The pork on this one is a bit more um, crunchy than this one was. I think the egg kind of soaks in and make this one a little softer. And this one has a sharper, sweeter taste from the sauce. And then the cabbage just gives it a little bit of extra chewiness. But, you know, I'm curious. I wonder, I wonder how they make this. Well, I asked the chef that question. He said, why don't you come behind the counter and take a look? So they start with really good pork. This is pork loin. They put it in some flour. They add some salt and pepper. From there, it goes into an egg mixture. They get it all nice and eggy. From there, it goes into the panko bread crust where they put all the crust around it. Then they toss it into the fryer. Oil's heated to 175 degrees Celsius. It fries up for about five minutes. Take it out of the fryer. They cut it into precisely six pieces. And then for making the French tasting one, they put it in a sauce that has an onion base. So we've got two eggs that he whisked up and he's putting the egg on top of the fried and breaded green pork. Piece, green, green peas. Green peas. And now we put a lid on it. After five minutes of simmering, it is ready to take out and eat. That is a delicious bowl of katsudon. The second variety that they serve at this restaurant and the more common one throughout this region is the cabbage katsudon. This one comes out of the fryer and they dip it in the sauce for just about 20 seconds before putting it on the bowl of cabbage. In this case, the cabbage katsudon, because it wasn't simmered as long, they cook it in the fryer for one more minute. So each of these has a different sauce and something about eating this in the region is that actually every restaurant here says their sauce is their secret. Uh, but that might actually be a little bit of the fun part about trying it at the different restaurants is experiencing the sauces and experiencing the little different twist that every restaurant in the region has on sauce katsudon. So when you come to Fukushima Prefecture, you need to have Kitakata ramen. It's a different style ramen than is popular in the rest of Japan. And today we are at the Kitakata Ramen Festival and I'm here with Wakana-san. She is the organizer of this festival. And we have six different kinds of ramen in front of us. We have two from Kitakata and we have two from other regions in Japan. And so I was gonna ask, What's the difference between Kitakata ramen and other ramens? Because I think many people, particularly viewers from the US or other places, might have just had ramen, but don't realize that there's different specialties. So can you tell us what the difference is? Eh, Sapporo ramen wa miso beisu ni narimasu. Hakata wa tonkotsu ga beisu ni narimasu. Kitakata wa oshoyu ga beisu ni narimasu. Well, and I understand that Kitakata as a city has like the most ramen shops per capita. Like it's a small town, but lots of ramen shops and they open for breakfast. Yeah. Are you from Kitakata? Do you live here? And do you eat ramen in the morning? Yes. Yes. All right. How many times do you eat ramen a week? Seven times a week. Every day. Yeah. This. 
this is a ramen city. So I'm really looking forward to trying these different kinds of ramen and uh, seeing which one's the best. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna work our way from right to left. We're gonna start with some of the Sapporo ramen. This one is red. It's the only one that's reddish in color. Where does the red come from? It comes from shrimp. And this one has a miso base. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of these noodles. They're still piping hot. Mm. I can taste the shrimp in it, which is actually, I don't think I've ever had ramen with a shrimp base in it. And I noticed, I actually didn't get any spoons with all these things. You know how you drink the broth? Mm. Just like that. I'm not gonna eat the whole bowl and then the next one, cause this video will be four hours if I do that. So I'm just gonna move on to the next one. So this one's just miso based, but this one also has an egg in it. The pieces of pork are a little bit bigger and I need to make sure. That I slurp my noodles properly as I eat it to send compliments to the chef. This one has a more mellow flavor to it, not as spicy as this one. Okay, moving on to ramen number three. We're on to the Kitakata ramens. These ramens, uh, you notice the broth is more clear. These are soy sauce based ramens and the noodles here are wavier noodles. This one also has a little bit of a fish cake in it. So let's go ahead and dive in for these noodles. Mm. They're soft and chewy. Just the right amount of softness and chewiness. And the broth is a lighter broth. It's not as heavy as the other ones. So I can see, I can see how people could have this for breakfast because it has a, has a light taste. It doesn't weigh you down. So this one's a little bit darker because it has a little bit of a different fish in the base, a little bit more expensive one. These noodles, a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker than the last one. Mmm. You know, I like the phrase oodles of noodles, and I feel like I'm eating oodles of noodles right now. Mmm. And this chashu, you notice, it just comes right off. Like, you don't need to cut it, you don't need a knife. Mmm. Oishi. Delicious. So moving on to the Hakata Ramen down south. This one has won first prize in the Hakata Ramen competition. And you'll notice this soup, it's a little bit more milky. This is a tonkatsu base and it's been boiled for a long time to give it that milky flavor. And the noodles on this one, the noodles are thinner. Do you notice that right there? Yeah. Mmm. It's harder to slurp these noodles. You kind of have to bite these noodles because there's so many of them, but they're also good. What I love about ramen in Japan is I love the eggs here. The eggs are so much better than they are in the US. They've got that extra orange color. Mm. And they just have a much richer taste to them. And let's sip the broth. It's a, it's a stronger broth, but it's strong plus milky at the same time. So the six ramen, this is from kind of a non-traditional ramen vendor, not like a ramen shop that's inside, but it comes from a street vendor uh, in the Hakata region. These noodles are also thin. This one's got a lot of green onions on it. And the noodles here actually pick up kind of a, like a, like a spotted type texture to them, right? They look like a little bit of polka dot noodles. This broth, it's a little bit lighter than number five. And the chashu uh, is actually sliced very thin on these. Question is, which ramen's the winner? That's six different ramens. But I think, I think in Kitakata, it's gonna be the Kitakata ramen. Cause it's the most, it's the most slurpable. I can send the best compliments to the chef when I do this. And 
the broth being light, I can totally see how people can see this for breakfast. Now, when you come to Fukushima Prefecture and you come to Kitakata to have the ramen here for where it comes from, there's a whole bunch of restaurants to try from. And the festival might not be here, but I'll say try a few different ramen shops and check out the different variety that's here in Kitakata. So one of the things you have to eat in Fukushima Prefecture is horse meat sashimi. And we're at a restaurant, Leon, that specializes in this today. And the owner is serving us omokase style chef's choice. The best part about sitting at the counter is while enjoying our appetizers, we can watch the sashimi being prepared. And he's got six different cuts of horse, from the best, the filet, even to the part that's not red, under the mane. I think the mane is the most unique, because I've never seen that before. And I also love that there's a couple flowers on it. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is not all for me. This is a portion for four people. Okay, we've got our sashimi. We have got the sauce. So we're gonna take a piece of this. Just twirl it around in there. Mm. It's pretty good. Now, that makes it sound like I didn't think horse sashimi would be good. Uh, I wasn't sure what to think of it, but actually it's kind of a sweet taste to it. Here, let me go for the filet, the most expensive piece. I'm sure the sauce helps quite a bit too, because it is a spicy sauce. It's very tender. You know, raw meat is something that you wouldn't think would be tender, that it would be chewy. I think that's probably what makes good horse sashimi from bad. Let's go for the white one, the main. I'm just gonna dip that lightly because I want to taste it. Mm, this one's more chewy. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. almost has a consistency of like chicken skin or something like that. Like if you were eating chicken skin that wasn't cooked, I think I like the meat better than the main. Now the other thing you might be asking is how much does horse sashimi cost compared to fish sashimi? Well, let me tell you, this whole plate for four people, 4,000 yen, which is 1,000 yen a person, which is the equivalent of 10 US dollars. Really pretty inexpensive. Great reason to come to Fukushima just for this, for this high quality. If you're in Tokyo, I'm sure it's gonna cost a lot more. A must eat sweet in Fukushima Prefecture is the cream box. This is a specialty of Koryama City, the second largest city in Fukushima Prefecture. This is something they've been serving in the city since the 1970s. Lots of bakeries serve it around here. You can find it at the Koryama train station. Uh, and I'm really excited to try this because I've read a lot about this. It's bread uh, with some sweet cream on it. So let's dive in and give this a taste. Mmm. That's a lot of cream. Mmm. It's kind of like the cream that might be in like a Bavarian cream filled donut or something like that. But it's a, but it's a lighter cream. Mmm. It has a, a fresher taste to it. Mmm. And more of a milk taste. Um, so this is the original. Now, there's special ones that you can get at different bakeries around here for different seasons. Bakery we were eating this at today had three seasonal varieties. This one is chestnut and maple. This one is edamame with the cream. And this one is chocolate, a special for Valentine's Day with a heart on it. Now you'll find that the bakeries in the region will have different special flavors for different types of the year. You might perhaps come and not see any of these varieties and see a grapefruit variety. But I think a fun thing to try, and just like we've been doing in a lot of these places, to try the different varieties. These are fairly inexpensive. They're between 100 and 200 yen, so. Mm. I like this one, because I like maple. I really like pancakes. And you know, pancakes, or something in Japan they don't really serve as breakfast. Like they often eat pancakes as a dessert throughout the day. So I haven't had pancakes my whole trip here. Mmm. We're good. You know, the perfect drink to have with your cream box. Just buy some coffee or tea. It's really quite sweet. Um, 
so you'll enjoy having something that kind of washes that down. Okay, I'm really curious about this one, and I bet you're curious about this one. I'm so curious about this one that I'm gonna eat it last, and I'm gonna eat this chocolate one next. So this is the special Valentine's Day one. So this is to you, OC girl, who's behind the camera for Valentine's Day coming up here. This one tastes a little bit like a chocolate topping that would be on like a, maybe like a chocolate cupcake um, or like a chocolate cake. Mm. I should point out that although this is white bread, um, in the US, if you were served like white bread, you'd, I'd be feeling pretty sad for myself because Wonder Bread is a pretty sad thing. But this white bread is actually pretty fresh and tasty and it has kind of a nice spongy texture to go with it. So here, let me cleanse my palate with some coffee before we go on to the edamame one. Drum roll, please. Okay, got to bite in enough to get to the edamame. Mm. It's interesting. That's curious. It's quite good. I've never had, I've never really had sweet edamame. And I really wasn't sure I would like this one, but this one's actually quite tasty. So if you come to Koryama City, and this is a good stopping point, like if you're taking the Shinkansen into Fukushima Prefecture um, to jump off to other places, make sure you try the cream box when you come through here. All right, well, those cream boxes were really good. Actually, a lot better than I thought they would be. Uh, but you know, one thing that's in common about all the things I've shown in this video, I've just shown one restaurant or one bakery in this case, but these delicacies are served in lots of different restaurants around the region. So try a few and enjoy them. I'm gonna tell you, when we go to Koryama Station, I'm gonna get some milk boxes from someplace else to see how they taste. Hey, but if you wanna see more videos about Fukushima Prefecture, you'll find links in the description below to the entire series or a larger series about Japan. You can click here on the screen to watch a couple of more. And as usual, Topher and I I won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video.